Hello everyone. My name is Peter, and today in this video, sponsored by Squarespace, we are going to be looking at, examining, reviewing, using, testing out three pens in a pen family known as technical pens, specifically Rotring, Staedtler, and Kohenor pens. Now, let's start by examining the Rotring, which is probably the one I've used the most in the past. One of my favorite pens. If you buy a single Rotring pen, it comes in a cool triangular cardstock box. The only other thing in the box is a small piece of paper with some instructions. All three of the pens we're going to look at today are labeled as 0.35 nib width, but we'll do a drawing test later to see if that's consistent across the three brands. Also, across all three of the brands, as you disassemble them, you notice that the basic construction is the same. They all have entirely metal nibs with a small metal needle or wire in the nib, which is kind of hard to see, which, when touched to the paper, lets the ink out. The fact that the nibs are made entirely of metal is one of the main reasons that I like this type of pen, because it makes it so the nibs last forever. It doesn't slowly wear out, like felt-tipped pens, for example. It makes it so the line widths are consistent, which makes it popular among drafting professions. Of course, the popularity of the pen in this way struggled as soon as computer-aided drafting came out, and so now perhaps it's more of an enthusiast or niche pen, but I still love it. That said, there are a few downsides I've noticed. With all three of the pens we're going to look at today, it seems like the bodies of the pens are made of pretty cheap plastic, which is probably an effort to cut costs on the manufacturing side, but it's impressive to me because the pens still cost $30, which is a lot for a pen, and I would personally expect more from the quality of a pen body at that price. But several times with my roach rings in particular, I've noticed that as I find myself taking the pen body on and off to refill it, after a while it starts to dry rot or weaken in some way, and cracks begin to form around the base where it screws onto the nib. I, I, I don't over-tighten it either. I, I think it's just some kind of cheap plastic, and this process of taking it on and off slowly breaks it. And I wish there was some way to get a higher quality material for the body of the pen. Also, the roach rings in particular seem to have a chronic problem with the caps not posting on the back of the pen. The other two pens we're looking at today don't have that problem, but even out of all the roach rings I have, I, I probably have about 10 or 15 of them, only about half of them seem to post. And I don't know the rhyme or the reason. I, I have a few different models, isographs, rapidographs. Some of them do, some of them don't. I don't know why. I can't tell. Maybe none of them are intended to post. Maybe they all are. It's just a little annoying when the cap doesn't stick on the back, especially when it does on some of them so easily. Now, before we get to the next pen, let's make a small note about Squarespace, a great way to design and host a website for yourself or for your business or hobby, Squarespace helps you easily make highly customizable websites, which, thankfully, are also automatically modified and adapted for phones and other mobile devices. Plus, they have very robust e-commerce tools, so you can either list your products and have people come buy your store in real life, or just have them order online. They've got inventory management, a simple checkout process, secure payments, and once you ship stuff to people, even I do this, I just pop in the tracking number and then it automatically sends them another email updating them with the tracking number. So go check it out now, squarespace.com for your free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash peterdraws for 10% off your first website or domain. All right, looking at the Stadler now. The Stadler Marsmatic also comes in a cardboard box and a slightly bolder color scheme, a rich blue and bright yellow. This is one I haven't used before, but I was made aware of it when someone messaged me on Instagram about it, as it sometimes goes. As soon as it came out of the box, the texture of the pen appealed to me, a texture reminiscent of some of their felt-tipped pens. I don't really know how to describe the texture, but maybe you can kind of see it by the way the light is shining off it. It's different than the other two pens in this video. 
However, I will still reinstate that I don't think it's a high quality plastic, but still on the same level as the plastic they use on their disposable pens, which is discouraging to me since these pens are supposed to last for years and years. But I should not pass judgment regarding the long-term performance of these pens, particularly the Stadler, considering I have not used it more than a couple days at this point. One of the coolest things about these pens, however, is that many of them have built-in tools to help disassemble themselves. You might have seen I did that previously in the video with the Rotring, and this one has a little hex wrench built into the end to help take apart the nib. If there wasn't the potential to create such a mess when disassembling these after they've had ink in them, these would make incredible fidget toys, just taking them apart and putting them back together again as I used to do with other types of pens back in school. But ultimately, all three of these pens are filled the same basic way. You pop the back of the pen off, remove the plastic ink reservoir, and carefully pour ink into it. Out of all three of these, the Rotring is probably the easiest to fill since the ink container has the widest mouth, but it's probably always a good idea to have a paper towel handy when doing this because it's easy to make a mess. All right, finally, looking at the Kohenor pen, this one probably provided the biggest disappointment up front, which is a little bit surprising to me since, as far as I know, Kohenor has a strong pedigree and a rich history in making drafting tools and particularly these technical pens. Maybe quality has dropped off in recent times, I'm not sure, but the packaging on this one was the least inspiring. It came in a crooked little blister pack, the only one of the three that had any plastic in the packaging, and it was not satisfying to unbox, unlike the other two, since it had to be ripped and torn apart. Also, once unboxed, the first impressions of the pen itself were very low. The lettering on the pen had a lot of weird, streaking, strange, hairy lines coming off the letters, and the 0.35 size mark on the cap was far off-center. Besides that, just like the other two pens, the plastic that the pen was made of also felt like it was low quality, but I guess that's just par for the course. Also, to remove the ink reservoir and refill the Kohenor, you have to unscrew an additional stubborn plastic ring, a feature which the other two pens don't have, and a feature which I consider extraneous and unnecessary. I suppose it's supposed to help prevent leaks, but I haven't encountered leaks in this area in any of my other pens which don't have this feature, so it just seems like another extra unnecessary thing on a type of pen that is already bordering on overcomplicated. Also, the Kohenor is the only pen of the three whose nib can't be disassembled with tools built into itself, but instead it comes with a little ring-shaped wrench, which of course is possible to lose, and then your nib would be forever stuck. Until someone invents pliers, I guess. But I do think it would be easy to break the nib with pliers. But ultimately, even with all of these little gripes, the pen is otherwise completely functional, and I admit I am nitpicking a little bit, but this is only because in its actual operation, it feels almost identical to the other two pens as it draws lines across the paper. So now let's get into a drawing test where we examine the way it draws lines and compare these three pens side by side. All right, so for this little drawing experiment, what I did was I divided the paper vertically up into three columns and gave each pen its own column. Kohenor, Stadler, and then Rotring, each a column. And then the idea was to create one cohesive drawing uh, with all three columns. And then to see maybe after the whole drawing was complete, if it would, there would be a visible difference across the three columns. Maybe if the line quality in one column from one pen would look better or different or just be noticeable if there would be some noticeable differences, right? Or maybe as I switch between the pens, maybe I would notice that there would be, uh, maybe it would feel different. And I did notice some differences. Um, maybe one thing I noticed was that the, the Kohenor pen felt uh, the scratchiest, kind of like I was drawing with the tip of a needle the most. And th that might sound like a negative thing, but I kind of like that. Uh, I, don't, 
I know it, it still sounds bad, I know, but I kind of like the the scratchiness of these pens. I would say the the Staedtler felt the smoothest, and the road string was kind of uh, middle of the road there, you know, kind of in a Goldilocks just right sort of way. And the Staedtler, I mean, the Kohenor also had the most consistently fine uh, and narrow lines. Like I mentioned before, these are all labeled as the same line width, 0 0.35, but I think that the Kohenor had the narrowest lines, the finest lines, and the Staedtler, I think, had the least consistent lines or the most inconsistent lines. Sometimes they would be narrow, and then sometimes they got a little thicker. And I think it was the pen, but there is also a chance it was just the part of the paper, because sometimes there are inconsistencies in paper, but I don't think it was the paper in this case, because I didn't have any other problems with other areas of the paper. And so far, the even in this experiment, the road ring gave me a pretty consistent experience like it has so far uh, with other road ring pens I've used. Um, so I think that both the both the Staedtler and Rotring were were originally these were originally German companies and probably originally made in Germany, but um, originally Rotring was not called Isograph. The first Rotrings were called Rapidographs, and you couldn't refill them like the way I refilled it here in this video. You weren't supposed to do that. I don't think it, they were all cartridge refills, um, but I don't really like that kind of refill refill type. I, I prefer the just having a big bottle of ink and being able to refill it like that. And so maybe about, I think it was in the 70s, about 25 years after these uh, Rapidographs came out, they, they came out with the Isograph, which is my preferred type of pen. And, um, and I don't, I don't know that they've probably, I think they've switched around their manufacturing locations uh, a number of times since then. I think maybe for a while they were made in Japan. Uh, I haven't tracked the whole history of that, but on the box for the road ring, it says made in India. And for the box for the Staedtler, it says made in Germany. So that has stayed in Germany. I'm not really sure the significance of all that. The Kohenors are... That's a Czech company, and uh, interestingly enough, named after the Kohenor diamond, I suppose, which is a huge diamond, once upon a time found in India, I think, or maybe South Africa, I'm not sure, but it's now, uh, it was taken by the British and put in the British crown jewels, and, but the, the Kohenor packaging says, made in USA, I think they're owned by that it says chart pack, chart pack. Um, Rotring, on the other hand, is owned by a big company called Newell. I think they own like Elmer's Glue and Sharpie and stuff like that. So that's under the ownership of some other big companies. So I don't know. I think they've gone on, most of these companies have probably gone under a lot of transformations and stuff like that over the years. I don't really want to say much about this drawing in particular because it felt a little bit uninspired for me. I'm kind of at that weird stage where I feel a little bit annoyed by the things I'm drawing because I feel like I'm drawing the same things over and over again. But I say that sometimes. But, uh, I mean, what are you going to do? Something is better than nothing. Uh, and I mean that more than ever when it comes to drawing because drawing something is way, way better because nothing feels worse than drawing nothing when you wish you could draw anything, right? Artist block is the worst case scenario. So I'm just thankful to be drawing. I, I mean, I guess I am kind of in this weird phase where I'm drawing these kind of um, biomechanical, you know, masses on spindly legs. And uh, hey, I'll take what I can get. So I, also, I will say, I know in the beginning of this video, I was reviewing the pens and it seemed like maybe I had more uh, things in the cons column than the pro columns, more, you know, gripes than praises like peter why are you using these pens if you're just going to complain about them and say hey the plastic is cheap and the the caps don't go on the back and all this stuff right but the bottom line is the reason i use these pens the, the reason i love them so much is because it just feels so satisfying the way they draw lines i love it uh i mean some people love like flex nib fountain pens right i feel like these are the the flip side of that coin, 
because you know the flex nib pens you can get a lot of line variation this is like just as nice that they put down ink in kind of the same way but it's completely not flex nib it's very crisp nice lines but just the way i don't know i just love it it's crisp and just that kind of drawing with the tip of a needle feeling i just really love i love it i don't know how else to describe it except to say that i like it and it's i do i am kind of a little bit sad that the pens you know are like 20 i think the the well to be honest i bought the koinor I'm about to say that I'm sad that the pens cost so much because I wish more people could try them, but it's hard to convince, you know, I, I don't want to pressure more people to try them if they don't even know if they like them, if, if they cost so much, right? I was shopping on McMaster Car, which is a kind of an industrial supply website, which I love the aesthetics of because the whole website is in black and white. It's just grayscale, entirely grayscale website. And, and it's just like a completely utilitarian website. And I was on there and I, there's like a drawing or some section with a bunch of pens and pencils and stuff. And on there was a technical pen. And this is the type of place where you don't, you don't say, Hey, I need a Koenor technical pen, or I need a roach ring. It's just like some boss saying to one of their employees, like, Hey, order a technical pen. It needs to be here tomorrow. And so they go on the website and they say technical pen. Buy. It doesn't matter, you know, like what brand it is, I guess. It just needs to meet certain specifications. Sorry, can you hear me snapping? It just said technical pen, and there was a black and white picture of it for a lot of things on there, for like parts like bolts and screws and stuff. There are CAD drawings, uh, stuff like that. And so I just bought this pen. I was like, it's, it was like $25. I was like, I have to know what technical pen this is because I couldn't really tell from the picture. It didn't say in the description, I don't think. If it was Koenor or Rotring or or what, so I just bought it. I had to find out, and it was the Koenor. Kind of makes sense. Um, and there are other pens I didn't include in this review, like the um, what's it called, the Faber Castell. I did. I think it's called TGS One or STG One or something. I did. A, I did a review of one of those not too long ago, or maybe it was a long time ago. Even one of those that instead of having a needle inside of the nib of the pen, which I'm not sure if I explained how that works very well, the needle going inside there, how it actuates, but instead of having a needle, it actually has like a little, like a jewel in there that's supposed to last even longer, which I don't completely understand because I have never had a problem with the entirely metal components of the nib wearing out. So that's not the part of the pen I have problem with wearing out, right? The metal parts, I, I need the plastic parts to be replaced with something more resilient, not the metal parts. Um, I wish, yeah, I wish I could get a technical pen like this that had like a, like a lightweight, like aluminum body. That would be awesome. Maybe I could find someone who would machine it. I mean, like the, I use these pens a lot. I've been using them for years. I would pay, you know, like, is it unrealistic to, I would pay like a hundred bucks. Is that realistic? I don't know. Hmm. I have to look around. Maybe there's places you can give schematics or something or Maybe I could like send one of the pen bodies to some machine shop and they could make a similar version of it out of something. I don't know. Anyways, it really, like most pens, it comes down to personal preference. I just presented a few things here, a few little gripes and nitpicks, but you can see for yourself maybe what, which ones you prefer. Uh, I don't think any of them have true superiority over the rest. I mean, I think in my opinion, the road strings are probably the best, but they, they all have their downsides. And, uh, I don't know, a lot of people have problems with them, um, getting dried up and, uh, getting clogged up pretty easy. Uh, that's a common problem that people have. So just be aware of that. There is, they sell cleaning fluid and something called supersonic cleaners, I think, where it like helps clean out the, the nibs and helps keep it working. I usually just take the nib out and soak it overnight in a glass of water if it's not working. That usually gets it working for me. But, you know. Anyways, I think there was more stuff I was going to say. But as usual, whenever I sit down to actually talk, most of it slips right out of my head. So, anyways, thanks for watching, everyone. Take care. Okay? Okay. Okay, bye.